Same with Iron Man. 99.999% of the world population cannot finish an Iron Man. It's actually not about showing up. 95% of people who start Iron Man end up completing it. So the challenge is not about finishing it, it's actually showing up at the top one. And so, either you do an Iron Man or you decide to do a startup, pain is inevitable. But suffering is an option. Right? And that's a mindset. That's a mindset shift that you need to be able to make. If you're passionate about what you're going to do, if you believe in this idea, if you believe that you can actually change the world, you will do it. And you'll go through some pain, but you will not be suffering during the journey. So here are my kind of seven rules that talk about how to become a successful entrepreneur. And the first one is fear. And the first thing you need to overcome is your fear. You have to learn to control your mind. Fear is going to be present at every stage. It's going to tell you why you should not be doing this. Because then tell you there's a ton of rational reasons why you should not be doing this. Dream. This is really all start. As kids, we were told we have to dream. And then as we go through life, we can adults, we learn that our dreams become goals. And then we have to actually turn those goals into projects. But start there. Start there with a the passion, with a the belief that you can do something impossible. You can change the world. I was crazy enough nine years ago to believe I could change the job market. About a year ago, I committed to do this Iron Man. I signed up for it. I was crazy enough to believe I could actually show up at the cell phone and do it. So start with the dream. You have to follow your dream. The day is a crucial moment. You have to commit. Right? And before you plan anything, you have to commit first. Plan second. I love this picture. This is a wheat soup flying. I've never done that. It looks pretty healthy. Can you imagine if you're on the edge of that cliff? It's probably a ten or feet drop. You have to commit to this jump. And if you screw up the jump, well, there is no safety net. So it's bad news on the other side. But that's the same with scholarship. You have to let go of your day job. If you want to do this, commit and start a company, you have an idea, first thing you should do, get up and quit your day job. Now that is a pretty daring thing to do. I was lucky enough, I did it part of my time where I had nothing else to do. I came back from grad school, didn't have a job, I was married, but I didn't have a mortgage, I didn't have kids yet. And these are all the reasons why people rationalize and say, I can't do it, get a mortgage to pay. The kids in school, they have potential for college, I have all kinds of reasons. Now the reality for me, the first day I actually was able to collect a salary. So we would set the ladder, my partner and I worked for about six or nine months for free. We kind of self funded some of that with the money we had. Got it together, spent $20,000 together and put it up. When we first raised money from Andrew Investor, we didn't raise a lot, we raised like $700,000. We were able to pay ourselves $50,000 a year. I'm sure everybody in the average income in this room is much higher than that. And then two weeks later, my wife got pregnant. And sure enough, when I raised more money, we discovered twins and my, my twins were born. Now, if those things had been in my life before, I may have not made a jump. I may not have committed to it. But I saw a window, I didn't look back, I went, I had no plan. I committed to the dream of entrepreneurship first, and then I went to figure out a plan. How am I going to do this? How am I going to pay for uh, you know, the rent? How am I going to send my kids to school? You know, all those kind of things. Resilience is one of the key essential characters you need to have as an entrepreneur. You have to be a self-starter. If the kind of person where you always need to push to get motivated, this is going to be pretty hard. Entrepreneurship is pretty hard. You have to be able to deal with what comes your way. Do not finish is not an option. It should not be a world that belongs to your vocabulary. Now this picture is about um, a woman named Julie Moss. Julie Moss was a student in 1982 
And in the early years of Ironman race, she decided to sign up for the race. She wanted to know what it's like to do the race. Never done the race before. I barely won the marathon in her life before. Sign up, does the race, and then through the race, she finds herself in the lead. And this is the days where they do the race on water and bananas because Powerball has not even been invented yet. She's in the race, she's 10 miles to the finish line, and she's in the lead. She's surprised by it. And then she starts to suffer from dehydration and pain, and her body starts to shake. And then two miles to the finish line, she falls. She picks herself up, gets up, wobbles a little bit, keeps running, and then a mile to the finish line, she falls again. Sits there for the time, managed to, with help, get up again, keeps running, and then 200 yards to the finish line, she falls, she can't get up again. The number two person passes her and the winning the race. This is captured on national television. You can actually see the archive on YouTube if you look it up on me. Then decide, I am going to finish this. And decide to call on her home the last 200 yards and finish. She changed the world of Iron Man, the story, and she basically the person that established the fact that finishing is the victory. She showed tremendous, tremendous resilience. In face of adversity, she did not give up. Not finish was not in a book. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you can't quit. Things are going to go wrong. I can give you that as a guarantee. You're going to get sued. Maybe your distribution partner is going to drop up you. People are going to quit on you. They're going to lie to you. Maybe you're going to look like you're going to want money. You're going to look like you're going to head for bankruptcy. Whatever it is, I've seen it all. I went through all those things. In the past 12 months, I made some traffic change to the business, change directions, change strategy. Everybody was against me. Everybody hated my idea. Keep on I did it anyway. I ended up changing the whole management team as a result. Some people quit. They have been with me for like eight years. But that's what you have to do. Today we're still standing, we're still trying to as a company, we're profitable and we're growing. But that's what you have to do too, as an entrepreneur. You have to aim high. There's one guarantee, if you aim low, you'll land low. If you aim high, there's no guarantee you're going to land high, but you have a chance. If you aim low, you will land low. Now my brother, he's in France, he's also an entrepreneur, not by choice, but more by design, he's more of an artist. He runs a small company, he's got two employees. That's what he's comfortable with. Right. He's doing it because he really wants to succession around art and what he's doing. He doesn't have the dream to build a big company and be very successful. He does a good living. He's doing fine. No problem. But he and low is not very high. Now, I'm going to take another example. Instagram. We have a company of 10 people who decide we're going to take on the mighty Facebook in a mobile photo sharing wall. 10 people, 11 people against 5,000 probably from the best engineer in the valley, and they defeat his Facebook. Right. Because when they started their dream, they aimed very, very high. We're going to give you the best. And that's the least inspiring part of my presentation. It's, you're going to have to put in the hours. There's no way around that. When I started the company, I was probably working close to 100 hours a week. I've been doing the ladders now for nine years. If I look at my average time, I've probably worked 60 hours a week over the past nine years. Has to be the way. You can't get it done in 40 hours a week. If you're kind of a 40 to 45 hours a week person, you're going to feel the pain. It is going to be hard. You're going to have to learn to raise your cadence because there's no way around it. When I signed up for Ironman, I knew it was the same thing. Ironman training is about a six month dedication training where you have to put an average of 12 hours per week. And at the peak of the training, when you try to pick your fitness and performance, you have to work. You have to train 22 hours a week. So I work 60 hours a week. I have a wife. I have two kids. I have a dog. I have people to care for. And I have to find 22 hours a week to do this. Right. When you're the most challenged, when you have the least resource, my most precious resource is time. That's the one I have access to the least. But I can't extend the date. There's only 24 hours in the day. 
So to fit all that in, I have to be creative. I have to rethink my schedule and my time management skills. And I figure I live in New York City, I'm on a legal New York side. My, my office is in Soho. I look at the map and say, wait a second. I commute by subway every day. It's uh, 45 to 50 minutes back and forth. Right? It's fine. So it's almost two hours of commuting every day. Well, if I bike or run to work, I have a jig not too far away from the office. I can have a backpack, change. If I run back to work, I can move to move 10 hours of training. If I get up on Sunday morning at 7 and bike 6 hours, I'm back, I'm back by half day, that's another 6 hours. If I get up at 9, run 3 hours on Sunday, another 3 hours. Okay, I find a way to get 20 hours of training a week, and I still have time for my wife, my kids, and get help with homework and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know how I was going to do it. When I committed to do Ironman, I had no idea what I was going to do. I committed to the plan first, and then I figured out the details. Same with work. It's about leadership, being an entrepreneur. You are the one with the vision. You're the one with the idea. Nobody else has that idea. It's you. You have to convince people to join and follow your cause. You need to attract some of the best people, people who are self colored people who are smart, people who have other options in their life. They can go work for your startup, or they can go work for a successful company, or work for another startup. You have to prove to them that you're worthy of their time. And that's about leadership. And I love this quote from uh, Colin Powell that explained, you know, people would ask, what's leadership? What's the difference between leadership? leadership and management? Leadership is the art of accomplishing more than the science of management is possible. Not only about you, but I'm spent a fair amount of time in meetings. And every night I'm in the meeting and say, alright, we've got a project, we're going to do this, this is deadline, this is scope. We hope that we can do it. Well, we could, but we need more people, more resource, or change the deadline, or the scope. And usually I get those comments within 20 to 20 seconds after I spoke. Which people's first mental model is, can't do it, it's not possible. Why? Because they're operating under the principle of management. They do or they think along what the science of management says possible. And leadership is not about that. It's about convincing them that, yes, I know we have resource constraints. And by the way, everybody has resource constraints. Google is resource constraints. Right? So let's put that on the table and accept this as a guiding principle. You still don't be able to do it and rise above the crowd. That's why I go back to my example of Instagram. Can people go on and build a better app than Facebook and get the best and highest engineers? Why? The difference is leadership. The two founders of Instagram knew that they could do it, they could pull this off and do a better job with less resource. So we all stuck into a paradigm that I call the either or. Actually, I've learned this from my coach. In my early days of ladder as a, as a leader, I hired an executive coach to help me lead and be a better manager. And I remember a session where she told me, Alex, you're stuck in the either or syndrome. I said, what are you talking about? I understand the world, but I don't understand the meaning. She said, you think either or. You can be either an entrepreneur or one an Iron Man. You can do both. You can either spend time at work or give time to your family and kids, but you can't do both. I said, no, but look, I'm working 80 hours a week, and she said, I understand, but those are all excuses. It's all in your mind. You need to learn the most powerful word that's called and. And I'll explain this in a little bit. And so I went on and did Ironman last year. This is me crossing the finish line in August 11 of 2012 in New York City. It was 85 degree weather. Enjoyable day. And so as I'm going to Ironman, as I said before, the pain is invisible. 10 miles to the, towards the finish line, about 60 miles to the marathon, I get into a situation where my body is kind of giving up. My legs, my both legs are pretty cramped. My calves are cramped. I try to stop. Every time I try to stretch, I'm discovering I can cramp somewhere else. And I try everything, and I can't get rid of those cramps. I'm like, wow, I have 10 more miles to do. How am I going to do this? And my goal was not just to finish, I want to finish on the 13 hours. 
as to the bar for me. Remember, aim high, no, no tempo. So it's saying what? There's no choice. I'm going to run this through. I'm going to forget about the pain. I'm going to smile all the way. And I'm going to get this done. And as I'm running through the last 10 miles, the longer I'm going to in New York City, a man looked at me and said, why would anybody want to do this? Because at that point, the marathon, everybody's in pain. I'm not the only one. Everybody's around me who's running is in pain. Is some more recon for it? And I thought about it and said, you know what? He's asking the wrong question. It's not about, it may sound logical, he's asking, why would anybody want to do this? What's that painful? Why is it crazy? And then I asked myself, how many of us can truly cherish the experience of a single day that did not include a birth or a marriage? You can cherish that day for the rest of your life. And on August 11, 2012, for 2,500 people, that was the day. People came to Ironman not because they wanted to do a race or a triathlon. They came here to find out the answer to one and to one question. What am I made of? Am I strong enough to do this? Am I strong enough to finish this? Because people, when they do this, believe they can go on and do anything. I was blown away by the amount of email support I got after people emailing me and telling you, this is unbelievable what you did. You can go on and do anything. And I started thinking, you know, I went through rough time at work. I can do this. This is easy. It's a mind shift. And so I learned the world end. It's not a game of either or. Can I be an entrepreneur or can I be an Iron Man? When I first picked up triathlon, that was only three, four years ago, I'd never been a swimmer in my life. I never swim. I was a terrible swimmer. So thinking about doing 2.4 miles swimming was daring. My first triathlon was a spring triathlon. I almost drowned. That's how panicked I was with the swimming. When I committed to this a year ago, it's like, I'm going to do this. I don't have a plan. I'm going to figure it out. Before that day, I used to think, wow, if I want to do an Ironman, that'd be a cool thing to do, cool cheaper, nice thing to check on my lips. But I would have to take six months to that go from work. I could say, I can't pay 12 hours of training in my schedule. It's crazy. I became very resourceful and figured out the detail. And what was amazing is that my environment only started to change towards the end to support me because they were inspired by the change. And so this is my story coming to the end. Basically, I want to finish with this. I'm Alex Duse. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm an Ironman. Thank you.